Praise the Lord, everyone. That was fantastic. Praise the Lord again, everyone. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord on Wednesday night? You know, I, I think, I truly believe that, that we, we all have heard enough preaching and, and probably felt enough of the Holy Ghost to last us a lifetime. I, 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 I would, I, I would, <laughs> I appreciate that, but I, I know what you're saying, but I, I, I think that all of us, honestly, I, I, I think, you know, we, we have access to more preaching today than we've ever had. We have access to more teaching and Bibles and study and all kinds of things than we have ever had before. And I, I think if we had to, you know, we, we could go longer periods of time. But I'll tell you what, I am thankful that from Sunday to Sunday, there's a pit stop in the middle of the week that uh, we, we have the opportunity in the middle of the week to get together and celebrate God and to hear from his word and to edify one another in the Lord and to give him praise and, and feel that corporate energy that, that we can only feel when we're together. Aren't you thankful for that? I, I know that we have a lot of issues in our country. We do. Uh, and, and, and I know lots of people feel different ways about a lot of those issues, but the reality is we live in the greatest country in the world. And the, the opportunity that we are afforded to get together anytime we so choose to lift our hands and to praise his name and glorify him, what a fantastic opportunity we have. I am so thankful to be here on a Wednesday night to praise the Lord together, to pray together, and to feel the unction and the power of the Lord as we enter into his presence. I wonder before we pray tonight, could we, in your own way, you can stand if you want, you can stay seated if you want, but in your own way, would you just for the next few seconds just give God praise in this place? Let's open this place, open this service tonight with praise to him. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor, and we're so thankful for the opportunities that we have to come together to worship your name. God, we're thankful that we don't have armed guards and standing out in front of the church to protect us, and we're thankful, Lord, that, uh, that we don't have uh, police units that's trying to find an underground church here in Mount Vernon to destroy it. We're thankful that we have the freedom that we have tonight to lift up your name, to come together and, and to be boisterous about it, to have an opportunity to share your goodness with our friends and with our family without fear judgment from our country. We're so thankful. We're appreciative Lord. Blessed be his name. Holy is his name. Righteous is his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I am thankful to be here on Wednesday night. Amen. So thankful for what the Lord is doing. And the reports that we've heard since Easter, I want to let everybody know we actually broke a record this Sunday, this Easter Sunday, uh, in 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 no smart due, in no small part due to Sister Cheryl and her family. My Lord, they filled up our our middle section there. What a beautiful representation! And I could see uh, Sister Cheryl's face was just beaming with joy as she was surrounded by her family. And uh, what a great time we had in the Lord celebrating his death and his resurrection and baptism. Sister Barb on Sunday, just fantastic. And I want to just say thank you to everyone uh, who uh, made that possible for those that invited guests. We had a couple of new guests from here in the neighborhood that were with us on Sunday that said that they were going to try to make it back every service or at least every Sunday. And we're thankful for what God is doing at Landmark Church. Amen. Would you... Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We have several needs, and I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Um, but I, I just ask you tonight, and I promise I'll call out every name. Would you just agree with us that God would do a great work? We're still praying for Sarah, Al, Asa, Melissa, Vicki, and Justin Haas's father, all of which are battling with cancer. We want to remember John and Susan Gieselman healing in their body. Dixie Kretzinger, so thankful for uh, what they, uh, uh, what she's been testifying to. We want to pray for Bob Rainey, 
uh, continue to see healing in his body. I know that there's all kinds of things that are going on. They're not really sure what's happening, but we pray that God would heal him. Randy Phillips, uh, many of you may have seen, he, he did have a uh, shoulder surgery. I think it was on his left shoulder. He had his left shoulder replaced this week. He is home, and, and uh, from what I can tell on Facebook, he's doing well, and we want to pray for him tonight that God would just help give him a, a complete recovery. He's been dealing with that for a long time, and uh, we want to pray that you know through this surgery that God would not only heal him quickly, but he would regain the movement that he's he's been desiring to have and uh, that his quality of life would raise. Amen. Uh, we need to continue to remember Maddie, seven years old, Millie, two years old, these children that are fighting with disease and pray that God would touch them. Eddie and Sherry Wheeler, all kinds of things been going on in their bodies, and we want to lift them up tonight and ask the Lord to move in a mighty way. Uh, David Wooden, uh, still, I, I don't have an update or, or anything to report outside of what we reported uh, last Wednesday and then Sunday, and that is they found something in his lung. They're not sure what it is. I know he'll be going for more tests soon. We need to remember Missy and that Sister Amber's uh, stepmom's sister, um, and I think she had surgery and is, is at this point is doing well, and they're hoping that, that she comes through this uh, the way they're anticipating, and we want to pray that God's hand would be in that for a full recovery. Amen. We need to remember Cassandra Ortgeeson for healing. We need to remember Kim Forrest for healing. Uh, and then I'd also, uh, a special request from my heart tonight is, is uh, uh, late this afternoon, my grandfather was taken by ambulance to the hospital uh, having trouble breathing. He's 90 years old. He, he uh, uh, very um, scarcely beat COVID, uh, but the doctors told him that with his, he's got COPD and another, you know, some other issues. And, that, uh, you know, he wanted to do everything that he could to keep from getting sick. Well, we're in a situation now where um, um, we need God to touch him in a powerful way. Uh, I don't have any updates. Uh, I, as far as I know, that's the latest emergency. But I would ask you to pray for my grandfather, Leroy, tonight, that God would touch him and to strengthen my grandmother during this time. <coughs> and then all across this building, I know that all of you are carrying some weight. You've got something on your heart, your mind, somewhere in your life. Uh, it could be in your finances. It could be in your mind. It could be in your family. It could be in your health, whatever it is. If you have an unspoken request tonight, would you just lift your hand real high? Amen. Now look around and find somebody. that you're. Gonna, everybody here knows everybody's name tonight, Wednesday nights. Find somebody you're going to agree with and partner with tonight. Where two or three gathered in my name. As touching any one thing, it shall be done. Amen. We believe that. This is a church that is experienced and believes in the healing power, the miraculous power of the Lord. Amen. All across Facebook right now, if you have an unspoken request, just lift that hand. I know we can't see it, but God does. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith with you tonight. I would ask you if you would, put down your indoor voice and pull out that outdoor voice. And as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, let the prayers of the Lord, let it just, let it resonate in this place tonight. Could we do that together? Let's pray together. Lord, we love you and we're so thankful for this opportunity. Thankful, Lord, that we've got another opportunity to come into your presence together in one mind and one accord. One mind and one accord where your spirit can be released in a powerful way. Lord, we ask you tonight to be here. Lord, we pray uh, that a rushing mighty wind would fill this house. That hearts and lives would be changed and touched and moved by the power of your presence. Lord, all of us here tonight are carrying a number of things. All of us have things in our hearts, our minds, our souls. Things that are in front of us that we're struggling with or trying to overcome or that we're dealing with. Some of us have pain. Some of us have affliction in our minds. Some of us have carrying bitterness. Some of us are carrying unforgiveness. Some of us, Lord, are dealing with financial angst. Some of us have anxiety about our jobs or other situations that we're involved in. But, God, we know that you're greater than all of these. So, Lord, oh, even though we're fighting with some of this stuff, we're encouraged because we have an opportunity to come before your presence and, 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 and offer our petitions and present to you our needs. Your word says that if, if we're heavy, and, and, and we're burdened down. We can come to you and cast what we have on you and take up your yoke because it's lighter. 
It also says, Lord, the word tells us that, that you, you, you will be our burden bearer, that you'll make ways out of no ways. And so, Lord, we're encouraged tonight as we come into this prayer service. Lord, tonight we ask that you would touch Sarah, Al, Asa, Melissa, Vicki, and Justin Haas's father, battling with this terrible, awful, nasty disease called cancer. This disease battles our body and afflicts our body in a number of different ways. And, and even though they've studied it for years, nobody really knows what turn it's going to take or how to deal with it. We just, I think it's just a best guess. But God, we know everything in your hand is in control. And Lord, we, we, we're believing for the miraculous move of your spirit in every one of these situations. We're believing tonight, Lord, as we pray that the comfort of the Holy Ghost would wrap around every single one of these people and that they would feel the strength and the, the, the power and the peace of your word. In the name of Jesus, would you say in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up John and Susan Gieselman, testimonies, examples of your goodness and your greatness in their own right, things that you provided and opened up. Lord, they're, they're, when, 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 when we were looking for medication for John and, and found out the kind of medication he was going to be on, we, the, the, the amount of money that it would cost just to take care of that, uh, of, of, of that particular uh, um, uh, pill was, was thousands of dollars and was beyond our reach, but you stepped in and you provided a way. God, at every turn, every, every place we've gone in these situations, as we've continued to lend John and Susan up, Lord, every single turn that's been taken, you've shown yourself strong. So tonight, we ask, God, that you would continue the work, that you would touch hearts and minds and souls and their body. Lord, we pray, and I pray right now in Jesus' name like fire. Let the Holy Ghost set upon both of them tonight. Lord, I pray let them feel the love and tenderness of your spirit. God, we lift up Dixie Kretzinger, testifying to your goodness. Lord, she's not completely recovered, but she wanted us to know I'm still here. I may not have full functionality, but I'm still here. I may not be doing everything I want to do, but I'm still here. What a testimony of faith. God, we're believing tonight that you would continue the work that you have started in Dixie. I believe with all of my heart that at some point you're going to release full healing into her body and she's going to testify. She's going to be a testimony of your power and doctors and medical staffs are going to be astonished at what you have done inside of her. Lord, we lift up Bob Rainey tonight. We know the doctors don't understand. We know the physician doesn't understand. But God, you do. You created this body. You know everything that's wrong. You can see anything in us that's wrong, that's not working correctly. Lord, right now, I pray that you would touch Bobby. In the name of Jesus, touch him right now, we pray. Lift him up, Lord, and encourage his mind. Touch his heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your hand being upon the surgeon as Randy Phillips went through surgery. Thank you, Lord, that he came out of it and that he's at home recovering. God, we're believing tonight not only, not only for a complete rapid healing in that left shoulder, but God, we're, we're, we're believing that, that, that once he is fully healed, that he's going to have that full motion back and those things that he's desired to do for years but has been restricted on, he's going to be allowed to do it again. Lord, we lift up Maddie and Millie, seven years old and two years old. Lord, I, I know you, your word says suffer the little children to come unto me. And God, the most beautiful thing I think about children is they don't know any better than just to trust you completely. That They don't know any better. They don't know all the nonsense that we do. They don't know all the unbelief that we do. They don't know any better than just to put all their faith and trust in you. And I pray, God, tonight as we offer these children to you that you wrap your arms around them. And Lord, I pray at this young age, let them feel your spirit. Let them feel your healing virtue, God, in your name. Like lightning from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. She may only be seven, she may only be two, but I believe out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, praise can be and glory can be offered to a great and mighty God. Lord, in your name we pray. God, touch Eddie and Sherry Wheeler, warriors of your faith. God, I pray in your name 
name that you would touch this house, that you would touch this home, that you would touch this family, that you would be with them in a mighty way. In the name of the Lord, I pray, God, let them feel the comfort and the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up David Wooden, has gone through all kinds of stuff in the, in the last six months, losing his father, and, and that was enough to deal with, but now struggling in his own right, young man struggling in his own right just to keep his health. God, I pray in your name that you would touch David tonight. I pray you'd touch David and Maddie, and I pray that you'd touch Carolyn, that you would strengthen all of them. Let them feel, God, I pray your spirit moving in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Missy tonight. Sister Amber's stepmother's sister has gone through surgery and in in recovery. And I know right now everything looks good. We know that things can go haywire in the hands of men. But God, we're putting her in your hands tonight, knowing full well that if she's in the potter's hand, that it doesn't matter what things do on a chart. If she's in your hands, God, we know. We know. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's going to be all right. Keep your hand upon her, God. God, we lift up Cassandra Orgeson tonight for healing. We lift up Kim Forrest tonight for healing. And I pray, Lord, that you wrap your arms around these two ladies. In Jesus' name, wrap your arms around them, both of them struggling with afflictions in their bodies respectfully. God, I pray respectively. God, in your name, I pray right now as we lift them up to you that you would speak peace into the storm that's in their body. In Jesus' name, give them a testimony of how good and how strong and how powerful that you are. Lord, I lift my grandfather, Leroy Piercy, up to you tonight. No stranger to your power. No stranger to your word or to your spirit. I lift him up to you tonight and ask God that you would be with him in that hospital room. In the name of Jesus, I'm thankful for doctors and I'm thankful for medication and I'm thankful for treatments. I believe we have those, Lord, because you touched our mind to help us develop those things to get us along. But God, more than I'm thankful that he's in a hospital where people can care for him around the clock. God, I'm thankful because I believe that your spirit is there. I believe that your power is there. And Lord, the doctors that have told him because you've got this and because you've got that and because you've had that, this could be very difficult. God, I pray in your name you show that when you're involved, you can make ways where there seem to be no way. You can leave people scratching their head wondering how in the world did this happen? There are testimonies of that in this building tonight. People who were afflicted with cancer and all kinds of other things that you swooped in and made a way. God, do that again tonight across every single one of these needs. And Lord, I pray every hand that was lifted, every need that was represented by the uplifted hand and an unspoken request, God, let your spirit sweep down and sweep through each and every one of these needs. God, we know that you are greater than anything that we are facing. There is no mountain in our life that is too high. There is no valley in our life that is too low. There is no enemy in our life that is too big or too strong that you can't overcome them. So Lord, right now, would you offer that need up to him? Come on, use your mouth and speak it out. In the name of Jesus, as these needs are spoken here in service and virtually across Facebook. Come on, Facebook, let us hear you. Let us hear you say it. Speak it out right now, God, as it is spoken. I pray pray that you would impart your power in the name that is above every name in the name of Jesus those who are struggling with sleepless nights and those that are struggling with pain in their body and those that are struggling with heartache and and burden God I pray in your name right now let your spirit be released to do a mighty work in the name of Jesus Christ we pray oh I believe he's done it do you believe he's done it come on would you praise him for it right now God we give you glory and we give you honor in this place we are thankful that you are a healer you are a great God a mighty God a holy God you're a prayer answering God hallelujah to the Lord would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time as Pastor David comes thank you Jesus hallelujah
Hallelujah. You may be seated. I am so glad to be here tonight. Most of my sickness and most of my physical struggles have been on Wednesday night. And I'm so glad to see all of you. It is such a blessing. God bless you. Thank you for coming to those that are viewing. Uh, two Sundays ago, Pastor Michael spoke on the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Amen. I followed that with the midweek message and, and subject concerning the Passover. Pastor Michael followed with uh, the crucifixion last Sunday. And uh, I didn't plan this. This is just what the Lord gave me. But I want to follow the resurrection in some verses of Scripture. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we clap our hands to the Lord tonight? Amen. There's, when you look at the scriptures in those three increments, uh, they call it the Holy Week that Michael introduced us to. And uh, then there's 40 days that Jesus was alive and well. The Bible says by many infallible proofs. I've got some echo in here. Are some of you hearing the echo? Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, but Jesus was alive, resurrected from the dead, and well by many infallible proofs. Seen of over 400 people, the Bible says. So he did rise from the grave, and he is alive forevermore. Okay? Amen. Thank you, Tad. That's better. Matthew chapter 12, beginning in verse 40. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Scriptures, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The title of my message tonight, What Was He Doing? What was He doing? So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Can you imagine... After the crucifixion, the pain, the suffering, and all that he endured, if there was ever someone that needed rest and relaxation, our Lord and Savior needed it. Did he not? Yes. Amen. But you know what he chose to do? He continued to work for you and I. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, so often, so often in my frustration, I fail to see God working. Then it's after the process that I see he was there all the time. All right. He was working all the time. Amen. Amen. So when I fail to see him, it's because I'm in a frustrated state of mind usually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First Peter three eighteen through 21. For Christ also hath suffered for sin. All right. The just for the unjust. Yeah. That he might bring us to God. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. See, death still reigned over the believer and the non-believer. Till he died and rose again. Amen? amen. We we'll might address that in some other scriptures. Uh, verse 20, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure wherein to even baptism, baptism doth now save us, yes. not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience yes. toward God. Right. Yeah. I thank God for a conscience. Before I knew the scripture, I thank God for a conscience. Some way, somehow, born and shapen in iniquity, and yet there was a conscience. I just knew when I'd done wrong and, shouldn't, and done things that I shouldn't have done. Can some of you raise your hand to that same experience? I'm glad I still have a conscience. <laughs> Paul wrote to Timothy concerning the last days, talked about the conscience being seared as with a hot iron. Do you believe that we're living in a time, in a period of time, when it comes to the things of God, many times people's conscience are seared? That's right. 
They just don't feel guilty when they do something that they shouldn't do. I want him to continually speak to me through my conscience, through his word, and let me know. Amen. Amen. So he preached to those captives. Uh, Revelation 1.18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. How do you think he got the keys of hell and death? Amen? By defeating our foe. He's done defeated him for us. (laughs) And he's given us the tools to live a more victorious life. And I've lived a lot of my life. Can you say amen for me? (laughs) I want to start living and walking in the victory that he's already paid and done for, for all of us. Amen. He, that the key simply means the power and authority over hell and of death. J- the last part of John 14, verse 19, the last part says, Because I live, you will live also. And I'm thankful what I experienced as a 24-year-old man in a country church was the beginning of life for me. I failed God miserably since that time, but it was the beginning of life. And I'm thankful that I could go back and, and find that life in him. The Apostle Paul writing in 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 15, beginning at verse 55. He said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen for the victory? Amen. It's not me just that's living, but Christ living in us. How many can stand up, or not stand up, just raise your hand and say, Christ lives in me. Can you do that? Amen. You can't say that without smiling. <laughs> you want to try it again? Christ lives in me. You can't speak about Him living in you and not smile about it. If you've got, (laughs) hallelujah, oh, I tried to live to myself, I tried to take care of myself, been guilty of all the mistakes practically, but boy, when when I give him the freedom, when I give him the freedom to take over and begin to live through me, the greatest moments of my life weren't when I got my way, but the greatest moments in my life have been when I've allowed him to work through me. Hallelujah. And I'm still anticipating that day when this old corruptible body puts on the incorruptible. And this old mortal body swallowed up in immortality. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Hello? Hello? That includes women. Amen. (laughs) Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? Verse 11. For the perfecting of the saints. <laughs> for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's all of us. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Yeah. Unto a perfect man. <laughs> that perfect there means complete. Yeah. Amen and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I love that verse of Scripture. And they were first called Christians. And they were first called Christians. I believe it says that Antioch, if my memory is correct. Christ-like. When they saw these men and women of the Lord, they saw Jesus. Amen? Amen? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine 
by the sly of men and cunning craftiness, where before they lie in wait to deceive. I'm thankful no one's here right. that's wanting to deceive you. Yes, amen. That we have a body that loves one another and we all seek truth yes. and we seek yes. Jesus. Thank you. But speaking the truth in love. Can I repeat that? Truth can really only be spoken when it's effective in love. All right. Amen? Amen. Boy, the Lord's been dealing with me. There's so many subjects he's taking off of my plate. I can't talk about them anymore. All right. Because some of them you can't discuss That's right. and speak in love. Yeah. 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 Woo! I feel a witness of the Holy Ghost in my own life. I'm, I'm talking to me. I'm not talking to any of you in particular. Oh, be careful, little tongue. <laughs> what you say. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> but speaking the truth in love. See, when we speak scripture to someone in love, there will be no condemnation. There will be no guilt. But they'll feel a rapport yes. that allows them to acknowledge that they're sinned and they have sinned. Yes. But they feel something working inside of them that's going to lead them yes. to forgiveness and to repentance. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Yes. Now, verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. My brother and my sister. If we're not connected to everybody in this assembly. All right. That's why we're held up in prayer. Yeah. That's why when one hurts, we all hurt. Yes. When um, one's absent, we all wonder why, you know. Because we're all connected. Yes. Yeah. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And we've got to be connected to do the work as a body. We can do our work individually. But we've got to be connected one to another to do it for the body. Yes. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body yes. unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen? Yes. May I read? Thank you for allowing that. I want to read just a short part of that from the... Message Bible. It is not, is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down? Down to the valley of earth. And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up to the highest heaven. <laughs> he handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gift, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, to, to train Christ's followers in skill, servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all moving rhythmically all right. or in rhythm. <laughs> Listen to the same beat, feeling the same, and, and easily with each other. Efficient and graceful in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. Can you say amen? amen? Oh, hallelujah. God wants us to grow up to know the whole truth and tell it in love yes. like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ who is the source of everything we do. Yes. He keeps us in step with each other. Yes. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, yes. robust in love. Can you say amen? amen? Okay, moving on. Matthew chapter 27 50 through 53. And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent and trained in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and rocks rent. Some sources that I checked says that the top of that veil, that curtain, was 60 feet high. I've heard stories it weighed a tremendous amount, but it separated the holy from the holy of holies. And it was ripped in twain, uh, also the no longer a difference between Jew and Gentile, also allowing every one of us yes. to have direct access to God. Yes. 
any time, day or night, he's available. We have access. We don't have to share something with a priest and then him go in and sprinkle some blood for us. Huh? And by us having access, it brings us to feeling. It brings us to love and to emotion and a response to the one that paid it all with his precious blood. And, and uh, Hebrews tells us now that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. That doesn't mean arrogantly. It just seems mainly, mainly that we can come with confidence. He cares about everything about us. Right. Every one of our needs, every one of our hurts, every one of our disappointments. Yeah. Yeah. He cares about us. Amen? Amen? So we can come with confidence. He's not too busy. Now, i got to be honest. Mom and Dad did not have very many conveniences of life when I was a child and on occasion I wanted to talk to mom or dad and they said they were busy they didn't say it rudely but they were busy but they'd talk to me later sometimes they forgot it maybe sometimes they didn't but this this Jesus that we serve <laughs> huh? when you think of over six billion people on this earth he still got our name and number and he, all, he, all he wants, mostly, I find that he wants me to do first and foremost is just talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have to memorize the scripture every day. It'd be good if I did. But it, just talk to him. Yeah. Have you found him to be that God? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Oh. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Can you imagine? And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Can you believe that? Huh? Because he lived. They lived. And because he lived, we're going to live also. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Jumping on to John chapter 20, verses beginning at verse 1. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It's so down to earth and so full of What's happening? Yeah. And the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. Mary Magdalene was the first person that after the resurrection that Jesus Christ revealed himself to. That's right. The first person. Yeah. A woman. A woman out of whom he had cast seven demons. Yeah. I want to tell you something. He loves a sinner. Yeah. And he's wanting us to love sinners. Yeah. Because he's the only hope. Right. Yeah. He's the only hope. Yeah. Huh? And that just wasn't a one-time thing that he delivered her. But to, and another, one of the other gospels, they had gathered ointment to come and anoint his body. Various things. But oh, yeah. this woman. Early in it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, which was John, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin which was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher and he saw and he believed yeah. that Jesus raised from the dead that's the foundation of our salvation that's the foundation of what we believe Jesus Christ died he was buried yeah. and that he rose again yeah. amen yeah. <laughs> hallelujah amen. oh verse 9 for as yet they knew not the scripture talking about Peter and John that he must rise again from the dead Luke 24 45 tells us and one of the meetings that Jesus, he opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. 
So in this 40-day period while Jesus was alive after and on earth after the resurrection, you know, they, they didn't have comprehension of the scriptures. Right. We don't get comprehension of the scriptures overnight. And I don't care how old you are or how much you've studied, you will not have all of them. There's still more to be revealed. Can you say amen? amen? Okay. Then the disciples went away again into their own house. Verse 11 just overwhelmed me when I was studying. And but Mary, but Mary, the grace of God was so overwhelming when the Lord was leading me through this that for the first time I felt I could say, but David. Can each one of you Call yourself by your own name, but say, but Chris, but Ian, but Denny, but Michael, but David. He's a personal God. But Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping, and she wept, and she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Oh, I'll never forget. 24 years of age, my dad had died. I was helpless. I was hopeless. <laughs> I felt like Mary. Life had been such a disappointment. It was I was empty. I needed Jesus to appear. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Chris, tell me about it. Do you remember some of those hours and those times? Wanting Jesus to appear in my life. I just wanted something that I could truly believe in. Yes, I let disappointment so overwhelm me. I let situations so overwhelm me. I just needed a visit. I need a revelation of Jesus. And yes. Let's just look at these verses. This is what's so profound for this woman. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they've laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look at our lives. Uh, looking back over my life, the many times he spared my life. I didn't recognize him at the time. Mm -hmm. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Oh, draw me. Amen. Jesus then saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She's supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yes. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Hmm? When she said Master like she did, she was also saying, in a non-verbal voice. I'm your servant. All right. Boy, if you want to get God's attention. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> so often, we go to him with all of our needs. Yeah. So often we go to him with this and that. But boy, does he respond to those words. Yeah. Master. Yes. <laughs> huh? The apostle Paul said he was his slave. Amen. The best slave there ever has been is a slave for Jesus Christ. I'm here to serve. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, that he had spoken these things. I want to back up in verse 17. Here's what she said, But go to my brethren, the, the disciples that became the apostles, and say unto them, can you believe this? This woman was to carry the message to the apostles. Can all you ladies say amen? amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. This woman that had cast out seven demons, taking them at what the Lord had really told her to say to the disciples. 
That same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Can you imagine that? Fear of the Jews. The door was shut of all that had happened. Peter had been accused of being one of the followers of Jesus, and he had denied it. They were fearful. And he steps on the scene and says, Peace. How many of you have asked for peace and found him to come in like a flood? Amen. 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 Hmm? Hmm. Peace, he said, I give, not as the world giveth. I've thought before in my life I had peace when things were going well. I thought that was peace. You can only have peace in the midst of a storm. That's where you find true peace. Yeah. Not with you when everything's going well, you have your health, and things seem to, family and all is going well. Right. But in a storm. Let there be a storm so I can find the Prince of Peace. Amen? All right, amen. And when he had so said, he shoot, him, he shoot him to them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. I call this just the appetizer. What was going to happen? He breathed on them. He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Just a prelude to what's going to happen some 40 or 50 days down the road. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, what? As of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house wherein they were sitting. And cloven tongues sat upon each and every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. And began to speak with other tongues. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I mean, this chapter just full of, but Mary, peace. Oh, master. Oh, and then the promise of this precious Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. And when he had... And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Verse 23. Whoever sin you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Remit simply means to cancel or refrain from extracting or inflicting a debt or punishment. Right. <laughs> to you and I that have been forgiven so much, we need to learn how we can quickly yes. forgive people of their sins. Yes. I believe this. I believe that uh, according to Stephen... When he was stoned, he prayed that, that they lay not this sin to their charge. And I believe when somebody sins against me, I can ask God and through grace forgive them of what they've done wrong to me. Yeah. And they won't have to ask the Lord to forgive them. Yeah. But only the sins that they've sinned against me. Does that make any sense? Yeah. And let's make sure because all of us have been forgiven so much yeah. that we make sure that we forgive everybody that we can think of yes. that's wrong us. That we can just cancel that debt. We don't want them to be punished. We don't want them to suffer. Right. We want them to experience forgiveness. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Do we want this city to experience forgiveness? Yes. Amen. Do you have any family members that might not deserve it, but, but need to experience this forgiveness? I'm glad forgiveness isn't based on what you deserve, aren't you? Yeah. God's unmerited favor. We are forgiven. Can you say amen? amen? Okay, hurrying on. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore saith unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of his nails, and put my finger in the print of his nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Amen. And after 
Eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with him. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, <laughs> Guess what? You know the story. Reach hither thy finger. Behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. Yes. Hmm? And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, (laughs) My Lord and my God, (laughs) the revelation of who this Jesus was, both Lord and God. Can you say praise the Lord for that? And if you've had that revelation of who he is, nearly all Christian denominations use Isaiah 9 and 6 at Christmas time. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But he's that every day of every week and every minute of every day. He is the Mighty God. He is the Everlasting Father. He's a Wonderful Counselor. He is the Prince of Peace. In this chapter, he's spoken it about four times, peace. And I want to tell you, he's wanting to say to this church, if we could grasp, the power of his spoken word of peace yes. that should be on my life yes. and all of her lives. Right. Just that alone would begin to make a change yes. in people in our community. Because yes. hmm? peace is detectable. Amen? Amen. <laughs> my Lord. And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And that's you and I. Amen? Amen. In a summary, some high points of this, this beautiful chapter, I wanted to, this but Mary. But Mary. But Mary. But David. But both Denny's. Yeah, but Hannah. Ooh. A Jesus that wants to know us by name and know us intimately. <laughs> Jesus, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. If we seek him, what does he promise? We'll find him. (laughs) He spoke peace numerous times in this chapter. He gave us the promise of the Holy Ghost, and through the promise of the Holy Ghost falling out was the ability to forgive everyone. Who has sinned against us. <laughs> I many times like Thomas. Need my faith increased. Yes. Do any of you? Sure. It's wonderful to feel the presence and the spirit of God. And then a short time later have questions. Yes. Amen? Amen. We're human aren't we? Yes. Oh. When our faith is weak. He's there to increase our faith. I pray, Lord, that there'd be a greater revelation of you as Lord and God to me, to those watching, to those that are assembled here tonight. God, that this chapter would speak to us and change us. Just realize how much you care about each and every one of us. And how you want us to reach others. Help us to fulfill your will and your purpose in our life, we pray. Pastor Michael. I wonder if we could just stand our feet and lift our hands and thank God for his word and what he did for us on the cross, rising again. Yeah. Could we do that together right now, Lord? We're so thankful. We're thankful, Jesus. Thankful, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Mm. God, we give you all the glory and all the honor. You didn't have to do what you did. But you came down, robed yourself in flesh. Created a way where there seemed to be no way. We're so thankful, Jesus. And we want you to know, God, we... We strive not to take this for granted every single day. 
the fact that you did what you did for us. I know in our humanity, God, it's so easy for us to become comfortable with the reality of the sacrifice that you made. And, and God, we, we too often fail to give you the praise that's due you and worship you the way that we should just because of this incredible thing you did because you loved us. So, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of that. Forgive us all of that. We want you to know tonight, Lord, make no mistake about it, we are so thankful. You did for us what nothing, no one else could do. And you did it just because you loved us. God, you did it for those in this room over 2,000 years ago, before we were ever born. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for that. I'm reminded tonight, Lord, of that old song. Pastor David, it's one of his favorites, but I'm reminded of it. When you were on the cross, we were on your mind. When I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that that's why you stayed there. It wasn't because it was easy. It wasn't because just because you were God robed in flesh that it didn't it didn't hurt. You stayed there because you loved us so much. And we are so thankful tonight. Could we love him together right now, Lord? We're so thankful. Would you tell him in your own way? I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise your name. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, for the price you pay and for the path you created. Praise the Lord. What was he doing? He was making a way where there seemed to be no way. I think the devil was looking at those that said that they believed in God and saying, I have them exactly where I want them. There's no way out of this. There's no hope for humanity. Jesus said, watch this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful he made a way for you? Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time for his word, for what he's done? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor David, for delivering your heart tonight. We appreciate that every time he comes to the pulpit and shares his heart and his burden with us. Amen. Amen. I am glad he's feeling better. <laughs> it was kind of iffy there for a few weeks. and I, My hair was falling out. I... <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you can't have fun in church, my goodness. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, first is I think almost everyone has seen Sister Anita for the online church directory. But if you have not, please, uh, tonight or, or on Sunday, those that are virtual tonight, if you have not, Sunday, please meet with her. It's very quick and very easy, and it helps us tremendously with a number of things. And it's also going to be very convenient for you. Uh, I know there have been times when people in our church have wanted to know how to get a hold of somebody, and uh, we're calling around, hey, do you have Cheryl's number? Hey, do you have Liam's number? Hey, you know, and it's, it's, it's quite a web that we spin trying to get in touch with one another, and this is going to solve that, uh, make it very easy for all of us, including the pastoral staff, to communicate with everyone at once uh, directly. So very, very excited about that. Please see Sister Anita. It's super, isn't it? Super easy. And if you can't, yes, yes. If you're signed up, you should have received it. Amen. If you did not receive an email uh, from Sister Anita today and you have signed up, you need to see her after church because something's wrong. Um, April 17th uh, is our ministry leaders meeting um, from 10 to noon. That's our ministry leaders. That's not ministers in training. Ministers in training, we're, we're going to be in May. But our ministry leaders, you know who you are. You were part of our meeting last month. and uh, But that's April 17th, 10 a.m. here at the church, 10 a.m. till noon. Uh, and also on April 17th, our Landmark ladies uh, have a Cards of Hope event. Very excited about this. Um, it's Phil's, Phil's friends, and they send out thousands and thousands of baskets to uh, cancer patients all across the United States uh, every year. It's an incredible service. 
And uh, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Sister Jonna. Sister Anita has been helping with some of this stuff too. Some really neat ideas that we have. And they are extremely excited. As a matter of fact, I think one of the representatives reached out to Sister Jonna and said, we want to come to your church and see what you guys are doing to get all these people involved in this. It's really cool. So uh, we're very excited about that. 1 to 3 p.m., all of the ladies, uh, I know that there's going to be some food. Uh, guys, if if we dress right, we may be able to sneak some of those snacks. Lady, they always have the greatest snacks when it's just the ladies. Yeah. So, and the goal is a thousand thousand cards, and I think I think we've already got 150 or 200 or something like that that are that are made. So, uh, but um, well, I want to thank everyone in advance for being a part of that. Uh, you're representing Landmark Church very well. Just so you know, we're also able to. Con- uh, to include some landmark church literature, some some thing or not literature, but some things that connects the church in these, so that people uh, can access our virtual services, or, uh, you know, uh, can access our website where they can request prayer, those kinds of things. So it's a great ministry. Thank you all in advance for being involved. And then April 18th, Legacy Youth Group will be having their youth service here at the church. From 5 to 7 p.m., super excited about that. I know there's a lot of young people that are that are excited about what Sister Hannah and Brother Liam have planned and Brother Tad and Sister Amber have planned uh, for that night. Um, but um, April 18th, and the ages are from 12 to 18. And I, I have to keep telling Sister Cheryl that or she's going to show up. One to eat. I'm just kidding. Amen. I want to be here too, sis. So. Uh, and then April 20th, uh, Overcomers meeting, our men's meeting, April 20th, 7 p.m. here at the church. You will not want to miss that. As a matter of fact, I encourage all of our men to invite a friend to be with you. Amen. Uh, what a great time we have in the Lord, April 20th, men's meeting. Uh, I'm so thankful for all of you that have joined us here tonight, uh, all of you that are virtual uh, across our broadcast. Thank you so much for being with us. Isn't God good? I wonder if we could just close this service out just by giving him some praise and thanking him for being here with us tonight. God, we're thankful for your spirit that's here. Thankful for your word. Thank you, thankful for your touch. Thankful, Lord, for all of these beautiful people that you have placed in our lives. You are such a great, mighty, and powerful God. Bless us all. Keep us all. Bring us back Sunday. If you're gonna, if you're gonna invite somebody to be with you again this Sunday, raise your hand real high. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that. Amen. God bless you all. Um, Facebook, we love you, and we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, Just really 